Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episode 201. Yes, we've surpassed 200. And it's the Kevin is recording from the kitchen because the rest of the house is still not finished uh, episode. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger. And today is September 29th, 2015. Okay, as you can tell, I'm recording from my kitchen. The studio's not set up yet. I'm looking here at a real ugly fan from the 1980s, but it's an 86 uh, ancient fan. Um, our house is, our condo's a mess right now. If you look over here, uh, cups are lying around. Um, the kitchen isn't put together yet. Look a little further, there's our new hardwood floor that's supposed to go in sometime uh, next week. You look far enough down there, the dog is sleeping in his kennel, all happy. So, you know, we, we've just renamed um, our new house. Our house needed a name. It's called Chaos Condo. So that's what my life is like for the next couple weeks. The painters came today. The painters will be here tomorrow. Hardwood floor gets installed Thursday and Friday. The pod with the furniture that's been in storage for about a month finally gets here on Saturday. And we can uh, finally sleep on a bed and not the... The, ma the air mattress on the floor. Um, George, that's my life. How is mom? Everybody keeps emailing us. They want an update on what your mom's up to. She's doing very well. Mm -hmm. The crisis has passed. She's um, able to, she's now at home and she's well enough to demand that I give her back her car keys. Uh -oh. <laughs> what happened, uh, essentially the, the, her doctors are saying that she, 20 years of deferred maintenance all hit simultaneously and when the heart, liver, lungs, kidneys, this, that, and the other all go. They take other organs with them, and everything collapsed at once. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all been stabilized, and she's back uh, and uh, now driving around, uh, waiting. And one of the things she needs is cataract surgery. Oh. So residents of <laughs> South uh, Central Florida, beware, my mother's on the road again. Oh, no. Well, we, we do want to thank you guys all for your prayers. I was stuck in a hotel for with my family for 27 days, and you've uh, your prayers have helped uh, uh, Mrs. Conger and her health. And uh, we just ask you to keep praying for the program as well. George and I, uh, uh, it takes a lot to put a program together. Uh, George is a full-time minister in the Episcopal Church, and uh, it doesn't always have as much time uh, during the week as he used to. And uh, we text each other, are you ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm not ready. Are you ready? This, I'm ready. This, this past weekend, starting at Friday, I had six services. I had six, I had six different sermons I had to preach. I had. I mean, it's uh, all the all the people in your condominium development have now moved back to Florida, That's Kevin, right. and they want service. <laughs> I'm it's in a true. service industry, and uh, now they want, pro, they want, uh, they want what they want. That's right. So we need to talk about the Anglican world of news, and there's a lot going on. Let's start quick uh, um, about a story we'll talk about later this week. Um, Pair USA, a uh, a kind of a division uh, affinity diocese of the ACNA, has given up dual citizenship to become under just the ACNA, and that's big news and has big implications that George and I want to talk to in its own program. Um, we're going to devote this program to the primates meeting. Oh, wait a minute, guys. You already talked about the primates meeting in episode 199. And you told us that there's going to be a primates meeting in January in Canterbury. And that uh, um, everybody, including Foley Beach, had been invited. True. But there's been a lot going on behind the scenes. A lot of, um, we'll call behind the scenes radio static going on that I think you need to know about. And... Um, we want this meeting to be as transparent as possible, even if those who are organizing it don't. And uh, George and I are going to talk about that uh, in this episode, 201. First of all, how do you get all of your crazy relatives to come to Thanksgiving dinner? 
Um, because, you lie. <laughs> you lie. <laughs> what to get? You know, uh, <laughs> Uncle Bruce and, and cousin Matilda in the same room. You have to invite them, not telling them that they're all going to be there. You basically have to just tell them the good things that's going to happen. Yeah, we're having your favorite food, and you know, Grandma will be there, and the whole works. And but the the, the reality is, you don't tell them everything. And George and I have been piecing this together about. Um, different primates being told a little bit different uh, things or the repeat uh, they're repeating to the press different things about what's happened in the meeting the first thing George picked up on was that Foley Beach was going to be in and out in 24 hours correct we I have a feeling I have a sense that different letters were sent out to the different people giving different justifications for this meeting mm -hmm. um, the church press is pretty good uh, the reporters who cover the media of religion in England, some of them are extraordinarily liberal, but they're not liars. They don't make up things. And the Church Times and the Church of England newspapers are really good newspapers. Different editorial opinions, but you can trust what they write. Church Times had a summary of sort of the views of sort of the center-left primates and one or two conservatives, and they're all coming and their hopes for it. But there were a few words and lines slipped in there that were very telling. One of them was that it's understood by the liberals that Foley Beach is going to come the day before the meeting and not attend the formal meeting. Mm -hmm. That is not the understanding of the GAFCON primates or Foley Beach. That's true. And I went to Lambeth Palace's press <laughs> office and I said, well, can you confirm? And they said, well, we don't comment about press speculation and the primates are going to set their own agenda and so on and so forth. But the thing is, I trust the Church Times more than I trust Lambus Palace's press office. And what I think we're seeing is telling people different things. Mm -hmm. we've, well, we've, we've, we've been doing some digging into the background, and we're finding not everybody is telling the same story. Which is interesting. I don't think there's going to be a, a wide variation in what we're saying, but we know that certain people received invitations that said the Episcopal Church and Canada will be discussed as one of the first things on the agenda. Not as one of the first thing on the agenda. Well, I wanted to encapsulate a wider uh, primate view of the audience. I'll, <laughs> Kevin, I'll walk, on, I'll walk the plank on this one okay. and stand out and say, there are primates who it is their firm understanding and belief from their conversations that the Episcopal Church in Canada will be first on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I've heard and the, same the Episcopal thing. Church of Canada don't don't know this. <laughs> no, They're don't not know aware this. Of that. Don't know this. Don't know, or don't know the implications, or demand. Of course, we get to justify ourselves. Uh, you know, in, in the first few moments of the meeting, that's interesting because that that goes back to the thing of you know what has to be said to get all the primates together. Now, one of the th the problems with all this is not getting people to show up. You can lie. You can just say the good things. You can uh, hire a chef and bake the best turkey um, with stuffing ever. Don't forget the cranberry sauce. That's really important. But how do you keep people there once they see who else is there? And that's going to be the big issue for this primates meeting. Who shows up and who's gone by day two? Yeah, I, I think unless, uh, well, I'll back up a tiny bit. There are some games being played mm -hmm. by, by Lambeth Palace's staff, or it could be by the Archbishop of Canterbury. First, we have to decide one of three things are taking place. The Archbishop of Canterbury is incompetent. That could be a possibility. Second, the Archbishop of Canterbury is issuing orders and his staff are not following them. Or third, the Archbishop of Canterbury is issuing orders and his staff is following them. Now, where things are on that uh, spectrum, I don't know. But right now, the, uh, a number of the Global South uh, and GAFCON primates are saying, hey, wait a second, you know, things that are coming out of London right now that we're hearing, they're just not true. So they'll probably show up, but, um, but if it continues with these games, they may just say, oh, forget this. Uh, we don't want to have another Dublin fiasco where uh, it's just managed from beginning to end and we basically just were showing up for a photo opportunity. And that's important because 
according to everybody, nobody can disagree with this, except for uh, presiding Bishop Catherine Jeffrey Shoy, who has her own Episcopal communion, but the Anglican communion is broken. The fabric has been torn. Um, the reason to get together is to seek reconciliation. Um, and I think you got to show for that purpose. But what, as you alluded to, what happens is there's always a different agenda. Uh, we saw mentioned in this little letter, letter or reported that was mentioned that they're going to discuss climate change. Well, I hope they're going to invite Pope Francis. He seems to be an expert on that. Um, but is not climate change the reason that the Episcopal Church would attend? Yeah, and climate change is a non-issue, theologically speaking. I mean, the science, you know, I don't even want to get into the debates about that, but, you know, there are certain there are certain Anglican churches where this is really hot to trot. This is big stuff. Coincidentally, they're the ones that are crashing uh, because, well, but then there are other people where it's saying, well, gee, that's nice. It's an important issue, but that's not why we're going to fly halfway around the world. <laughs> no. Uh, you know, it's sort of, it's sort of ludicrous to spend all this carbon, you know, have all these carbon emissions to fly to London to talk about not flying to London and getting people to do good things. Kevin, really, the issue is not whether they're going to show up; it's whether they're going to stay. Mm -hmm. Whether they're going to stay past the first day. If they stay, it's because the issues that, and in other words, who is going to be there that second morning? Is the Episcopal Church going to get ambushed? Is the Episcopal Church going to stand and fight? fight his ground. Are the Global South people in GAFCON going to walk out because they've been told something and surprise, surprise, they show up and it's not what they expect? We don't know how things are going, but there's real disquiet out there, uh, both from sort of the thoughtful liberals that they're going to be ambushed and from the conservatives that they're going to be manipulated again for another photo opportunity. And yeah. it, the, the issue, it will be solved, everybody will be happy and life goes on well, well sadly we have to speak from personal experience we speak from Dar es Salaam um, where it was a you know a good meeting the Prime Minister came to an agreement they uh, put out a communique they told Ron Williams let's go to the House of Bishops in Louisiana and have the Episcopal Church reconcile repent and uh, tell us what they're going to do for going forward that never happened then they had another one in Alexandria where the, the primates not all of them showed up George well, that's one of the big jokes. Barry Morgan, the Archbishop of Wales, who was, I would kindly call him a piece of work. Uh, <laughs> at the Dublin meeting, uh, I think 13 or 14 primates didn't show up. Right. Barry Morgan got up on his high horse and said, oh, it's terrible that these people wouldn't come. This is the most important gathering of the Anglican Archbishops, blah, blah, blah. Guess who wasn't in Alexandria? Barry Morgan. That's Why? Right. He was on vacation. He couldn't be bothered to come. You know, this, Kevin, one of the things we need to point out is that one of the things that the original limitation said is we're going to look at all the things we've said in the past. Mm -hmm. Now, Gafcon hears Dar es Salaam. Gafcon hears, you know, the Episcopal Church must do X, Y, and Z. The Episcopal Church hears the Dublin primates meeting where a rump group of liberals basically put out a statement saying the primates have no authority to tell anybody to do anything. We're just a chat group to talk about global warming. So, is Justin Welby, who, by the way, attended the Dime, uh, Dublin Primates meeting as a facilitator for negotiated conversations, is this Primates meeting going to be a Dublin or a Dar es Salaam? And Justin Welby's trick is to get the Episcopal Church to believe it's going to be Dublin and the Nigerians to believe it's Dar es Salaam and then get them to lock the door and keep them in the room after the first day happens. Now, what is your role as an Anglican unscripted viewer? Well, it's to pray for this. You know, despite the agendas, despite everything, we do want the Holy Spirit to have his way in these meetings. And, uh, you know, we can come to these and say, you know, from past experience, primates meetings, Lambeth meetings, uh, ACC meetings have not been as godly as they should have been. And uh, we ask that you guys pray, because um, that's our secret weapon in all this. We pray that God would have his way, and that reconciliation would be the outcome of these meetings, because that is our greatest hope, that we reconcile with God and reconcile with each other. George, um, if we're going to go to the meeting, we're going to need money. 
And uh, I, we're going to make two appeals here. The first appeal is that we get more Facebook friends and more people go to the Anglican Unscripted site and, and like our site. Um, my Facebook uh, profile, if you want to be my friend, and I, I, I truly want this, is facebook.com forward slash K Carlson. Uh, George is facebook.com forward slash Geo Conger. And I'm putting the links right here. So you just click a link and be our friend. Boy, it's so cool to be in 2015. At the second is we need a little bit of income to help uh, buy plane tickets. Going back and forth to uh, um, England, find a place to stay. I'm, I'm, we're going to try, but I don't think Peter Old's going to let us crash at his place. Cost have, you a little... have you asked him yet? Or no, I haven't. And <clears throat> I think we should ask him up front, but uh, let's raise money before that anyway. Assume no. Uh, so if you could go to anglicaninc.com forward slash donate, Press the uh, donate button. You can send a check. Note the new P.O. box. Don't send it to the Thomaston address. Send it to the Milford address um, because I'm not driving all the way to Thomaston every every day to see who's donating to us. Kevin, Kevin one, one thing I should say is that sure. what is important and what we provide, we, Kevin and George, provide to the viewers is institutional memory. Mm -hmm. uh, except I've been to every primates meeting since uh, the Lambeth emergency meeting in 2003. Was Except that, for could, Dublin, could, you did. Did you do Kigali? No, that wasn't one in Kigali. I know. I'm uh, just teasing. No, uh, <laughs> no. But I've been to every single one: uh, Brazil, uh, Dublin. Yeah. Blah, blah. I've been to all. Of them. Sure. And you've been to everyone since Dar es Salaam, mm -hmm. except you didn't go. Neither of us went to Dublin because it was basically a joke. If there was no Anglicans there. But go on. And one of the things. When people talk about the historicity of the Anglican communion, but about the institutional memory, we have that. We have been there. We have talked to these people. We know what Drexel Gomez says. We know what George Carey said. We know what these things have occurred. And you're not going to get that from anybody else because nobody else has that knowledge. Nobody else has that experience. Certainly the people there. I think all of, none of these primates uh, have been to as many primates meetings as we have. <laughs> well, it's interesting because we also have the ear of the primates. Um, both liberal and conservative primates talk to us. And dislike and us intensely. They may dislike us intensely, but... They yeah, like they, they, you, they dislike me. Uh, it, well, uh, it's weird. You're the theologian, I'm the sex symbol. We have to deal with that. <laughs> But they'll sit down and they'll talk to us. You know what what's happened to the meeting today? You know and what's going on? And you you get background to the stories and stuff like that. Or uh, today we didn't talk about anything type things. Or uh, you know we hear a lot of the the background noise. And it's kind of every meeting is um, interesting. Uh, like <laughs> when we were in uh, Dar es Salaam, we saw um, Archbishop Gomez in a wheelchair. What happened? <laughs> Well, nobody would tell us. Finally, we heard that he had fallen in the shower, and they had to, to find a hospital in the middle of the night, in the middle of a, um, Tanzania, that would uh, do an x-ray to, to find out he had broken his foot. You know, these are the interesting things that happen, and we hope that uh, um, uh, we can record and do some live shots and uh, do Anklin scripted from Canterbury. Yeah, in, in the 1997 primates meeting, Moses Tay, then Archbishop of uh, Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. I think it was in Jerusalem, was saying stuff about discipline of the Episcopal Church, the exact, almost the exact same things that Gafcon is saying today. That was 97. Wow. And that was before Gene Robinson. That was before Catherine Jefferts Shore. That was before Michael Ingham. And you go to the primates or you go to the official instruments of the communion and ask about the issues. Oh, well, the fabric, the communion's fabric was torn. It's been torn a long time. It just didn't happen yesterday. Mm -mm. But these uh, the bureaucrats just keep trying to bottle it up and bottle it up. And we're not going back, uh, what's 97 from now, 17 years? So, yeah, long, long time, George. All right, so that's our episode for today. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger. And you've been watching episode 201 of Anglican Unscripted. Okay.
Okay, as you can tell from the background, uh, there's an ugly fan from the Goonies hanging over my head. I'm recording from the kitchen. Uh, the house is a mess. Uh, Mrs. Anglican TV is not going to be happy about this, but you know, there's things lying around over here. That's the wood new, paneling, wood flooring. Yeah, it's a new oak uh, redwood floor is going to be put in. Uh, um, oh, and there's the dog sleeping way over there. That was the microphone falling on the floor. Hold on, let me get it. Dude, I unplugged it. 